Good morning, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Google+. This is Rich again, back for your first video blog of the day for Wednesday, May 18th, 2016, around 6.56 in the uh, morning, Berwick, Massachusetts. It's uh, going to be a very sunny day out, 70 degrees, a little chilly right now, but it's morning time, and it's supposed to boost way up to the 70s. Some news to report, the Kansas City Royals beat the Boston Red Sox by a score of 8-4. to Day-night doubleheader today at Kauffman Stadium for, between the Red Sox and the Royals. Also, in the NBA playoffs, Game 1 of the Eastern Conference Finals, the Cleveland Cavaliers crushed the Toronto Raptors by a score of 115-83. In the NHL Stanley Cup playoffs, the Western Conference Finals, Game 2, it was the um, San Jose Sharks blanking the St. Louis Blues by a score of 4-0. That series is even at one game apiece. It goes to San Jose for games 3 and 4. It's Happy Victoria Day in Canada. And that's about it on the news. My first video blog subject of the day is about um, Starcade 1986, The Night of the Skywalkers, happening on November 27th, 1986, Thanksgiving night. And these, this was um, um, the Starcade 1986, second straight year they were held at two locations, Greensboro, North Carolina at the uh, Greensboro Coliseum and the Omni in Atlanta. This was famous for uh, for like the, the scaffold match between the Road Warriors and the Midnight Express. And also, the main event was for the NWA World Championship. It was HOA with Flair facing off against Nikita Karloff, plus other exciting matches. Calling the action in Greensboro, it was Bob Cardo and Johnny Weaver. And in Atlanta, it was Tony Schiavone and Rick Stewart, who was the play-by-play -play announcer of Central States Championship Wrestling at the time. And no dark matches on Starcade 1986. It was shown in close circuit television in the southeast and parts of the Midwest. And here are the matches. The first match was in Greensboro. It was Tim Horner, White Lightning, and Nelson Royal facing off against Don Quinoto and Rocky Quinoto. This was a decent match to open it up. Uh, last seven minutes, Tim, Tim Horner rolls up Rocky, Rocky Quinoto for the one, two, three. The next match happens in Atlanta. It was Bob Brad Armstrong facing off against gorgeous Jimmy Garvin with Precious in his corner. This was a drag out fight, 15 minutes. It went time limit draw. Like Jimmy Garvin went for a flying press to end it, but time limit expired afterwards. Precious attacked um, Brad Armstrong, but Brad Armstrong cleared the ring. The next match happened in Greensboro. It was Hector Guerrero and Baron Von Raschke. The cloth, that's all you need to know. Facing off against Shatska Watley and the Barbellion with Mr. One Paul Jones in Shatska's and the Barbellion's corner. And this was a decent tag team match. Hector Guerrero and Baron Von Lasky win when Vet Baron Von Lasky pins Shotska Watney for one, two, three. And that's that. Now back to Atlanta. The next one was for the United States Tag Team Championships, NWA United States Tag Team Championships. It was Kreska, Chef, and Ivan Koloff defending the U.S. Tag Team titles against the Kansas Jayhawks, which was Bobby Jaggers and Dirty Dutch Mantel. And this was an, a decent match. Ending had Ivan Koloff roll up um, Bobby Jaggers for the one, two, three to retain the uh, United States Tag Team Championship. The next match was in Greensboro, North Carolina. It was an uh, Indian strap match. It was Chief Wahoo McDaniels facing off against Ravishing Rick Rude with Mr. One Paul Jones in his corner. Um, Rick Rude did not say, what i like to have now is for you, all you fat, ugly, out of sh shape, Greensboro gangsters, keep the noise down. 
as well. I take a look, my little bob and we'll show what a sexy man is supposed to look like. But who didn't have too much mic time when he was starting in this time period. But that's what he probably would have said. And this and then the strap match is the winner has to touch all four corners. And this went about nine minutes or so. And Wahoo McDaniels wins. And afterwards, Mr. One Paul Jones attacks Wahoo, but he, but um, Hector Guerrero and and like Baron Von Raschke makes save stay. The next match was for the NWA Central States Championship. It was Sam Houston facing off against Bill Dundee. And this was a, like about a 10 minute match. It was a back and forth, back and forth ending. Had Bill Dundee hit the referee, causing the automatic disqualification. Sam Houston retains the Central States Championship. And now back to, to Greensboro, North Carolina. The next match was a hair, hair versus hair match. It was the Boogie Woogie Man, Jimmy Valiant, with Big Mama. Facing off against Mr. One Paul Jones. With the stipulation, if if Paul Jones loses, he would get his head shaved. If Jimmy um, Valiant lost, he um Big Mama would get his hair shaved. And Jimmy Valiant beat Paul Jones easily. This was one of the longest running fields in Jim Crockett promotions in NWA. It was kind of a mid-card field, but it was probably just to have something for Boogie Boogie, Jimmy Valiant, and Paul Jones to really do at this point. And in effect, fans were going wild when like Jimmy Valiant was about to cut the hair of... Uh, Paul Jones ravishing Rick Rude and the raging Bill Manning Fernandez attacked Jimmy Valiant and Manny Fernandez gave the DDT to Jimmy Valiant knocking him out cold so Paul Jones escapes without his hair being cut. The next match was in Atlanta. It was Big Bubba Rogers facing off against the hands of Stone Ronnie Garvin. Um, Big Bubba Rogers was with his, with his manager Jim Cornette and it was a Decent match. Big Bubba beats Ronnie Garvin with interference by Jim Cornette when the referee wasn't looking. And the next match was in Greensboro, North Carolina. It was for the NWA Television Championship. It was Tully Bl Bl Blanchard with J.J. Dillon facing off against Dusty Rhodes. And this was the first blood match. The winner of this match would have to get his opponent to draw blood first. And Dusty Rhodes actually drew blood on um, Tully Blan Blan Blanchard. But the referee was knocked out. And then J.J. Yellen comes in and he, he, he has a towel and he takes the blood off of um, Tully Blanchard. And then he you know, smothers Dusty Rhodes with a towel. And next thing you know, Dusty Rhodes is bleeding. The referee mysteriously wakes up, he sees Dusty Rhodes bleeding, calls for the bell, Tully Blanchard wins the NWA television title, the fans were booing like crazy, and when Dusty Rhodes gets up, he shoves the referee. The next match was the, the scaffold match in Atlanta, it was the Road Warriors, the Legion of Doom, Hawk and Animal with Precious Paul Halloween facing off against the Midnight Express, which was Loverboy Dennis Condry and beautiful Bobby Eaton with Jim Cornette and Big Bubba Rogers. The scaffold match is what you can't do too, too much like scientific wrestling on that because it is, it's just it's on 15 foot high above the lane, you know. It, it, it was like a horrible, horrible match with the scaffolds match, like like lots of balances, and it was you know not not that great. And they battle through the top of the scaffold, and then somewhat of the other scaffold. Um, the ending had the the low Royals kick Bobby Eaton and Dennis Condry off the side of the scaffold into the lane winning the match and that and J Jim Cornette was mad he tried to s escape but the low lawyers caught him and and he fell off the t 
top of like the scaffold 15 foot high and blowing out both his knees I think the original plan was like um to for the scaffold like Big Bob was gonna catch um Jim Cornette but he missed and it was a scaffold match is not the best of the matches but that's what it, that, that that's what this match was famous for was Jim Cornette taking that fall on the scaffold and blowing up off his knees. Also, Low Royer Animal wrestled this match with an injured ankle, a serious injured ankle. He could have blew it out if he fell down. The next match happened in Greensboro, North Carolina, in a steel cage match. It was the Rock and Low Express, Ricky Morton and Robert Gibson, who were NWA World Tag Team Champions. They were defending their titles against two members of the Four Horsemen. Ole and Arn Anderson, and this was a classic, close to 20 minute steel cage match. A lot of near falls by the Andersons and the Rock and Roll Express, but in the end, the, the Rock and Roll Express won when Robert Gibson pinned Arn Anderson for the 1, 2, 3. The, um, the Rock and Roll Express retained the NWA World Tag Team Tech Championship, and then the main event in Atlanta. George at the Omni for the NWA World Heavyweight Championship. It was Nature Boy Ric Flair, the reigning NWA World Champion, facing off against Nikita Koloff, who was the United States Champion at the time, but the United States Championship was not on the line. Originally, the main event for Starcade 1986 was going to be Magnum TA facing off against Ric Flair for the NWA World title, but several weeks prior to to Starcade 1986, Magnum TA gets involved in an AFA to car accident, and they had a scramble for a replacement for um, Magnum TA. They turned Magnum TA's rival Nikita Koloff face, which you know <laughs> it, it, it was. They could have had other options, but you know maybe that would have been a good thing probably the most realistic thing to do because I think the fans would not want to see Dusty Rhodes against um, Rip Flair for the third year in a row in the Starcade. And this was, you know, an okay match. It was, you know, back and forth ending had like a double, dis I mean, a like a disqualification, like Nikita hits the referee and Ric Flair retains the NWA World Championship. Afterwards, they have a lot of wrestlers come down because it was f a fight and it was, you know, an awful way to f have the stock came in event. Having Flair retain the NWA World Championship again on a disqualification. And it's stock 1986. I give it an average, it's an average, like, Big Show, I see there's some good moments here, but there's other ones that were like kind of what you could probably see on television. Many of these matches were like basically television main event for like pro or worldwide or world championship wrestling at the time. And tomorrow I'll be reviewing Sucked Arcade 1987, Shy town Heat. And, and this will be the first I'm um, Starcade that is out of the southeast and two more video blogs coming today first video blog will be about um the classic tv game show treasure hunt and the third and final video blog of the night will be about personality profile from a major league baseball player mark mcguire Keep calm, everybody. I'm a Julie Button guy. Molly Rose Blood of WCC All Accidents. Nice legs. Elizabeth Hart, so, so stunning. She's the best. Amy Swensey's awesome. Julie Donaldson of Comcast Sportsman Atlantic has nice legs. Kelly Nash of Major League Baseball Network and NHL Networks. So, so stunning. And in the words of Dr. Thomas Sharpie, this action will not be tolerated. Be a major